church's problems is a Holy Ghost revival, a move of the Spirit of God. And I petitioned the Lord. I said, God, if you don't move, we'll die. We'll rot on the vine. That's all there is to it. It's got to be a move of you. And I believe there's a move coming, child of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. But as being pastor of a church and over the years to watch people come in and then watch slowly but surely them drift off course. They start off great and before long you don't see their face in church anymore. And my heart just literally is torn on the inside because you know that they've had relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and because the affairs of this life or whatever might have happened, taken place, they've drifted off course. How many know the devil's very subtle and sneaky and he, little by little by little, he'll take an inch here and take an inch there and a compromise here and a compromise there. And the next thing you know, your uh, Christ is on the outside of the heart, knocking on the heart's door and say, won't you let me in and sup with you once again in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb. So we're constantly petitioning the Lord and crying out to God, God, get a hold of these that have drifted off course before it's too late. Folk, we're coming to the climax of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are end time players. I certainly believe that. I thank God for the, for the presidency of Netanyahu uh, over in Israel. Uh, do you realize our tax dollars was being supported to have him ousted over there? Obama set those things up to where he had literally uh, tried to get him ousted and the other, another president to come in. Our tax dollars was supporting those things. I want to tell you something. You talk about crookedness in government. We've got a lot of crookedness in government. Somebody say amen. And I don't know about you. I don't put too much stock in my government, but I do put all stock in my God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But we are end time players. And I believe we're going to see uh, something, uh, 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 something that might be, be uh, very explosive take place over in the Middle East shortly and very soon. Uh, and uh, believe me, I don't think it's going to be for the good, but it's going to be for the worst, and I believe it's going to wake a lot of people up. Are you hearing me, child of God? Because what goes on over there is going to affect what's going to go on here. I don't know about you. I don't know about the future, but I know who holds the future, and I know who holds my hand. I put my trust and my confidence in my God, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise in the name of the Lord? Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise the Lord. Any prayer requests tonight before, as we go to the Lord in prayer? Bless the Lord. Any prayer requests? Hallelujah. Enoch. I just want uh, to remember some, I think there's some people coming Sunday morning for the dedication that really, truly needs God to get a hold of their hearts. And they may not hear another gospel. Amen. You know, Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm just praying everybody will pray that Bless the Lord. Amen. Let's just do that right now. Father, Lord, I thank you and I praise you as we petition you ahead of time, God, for a mighty move of your Holy Spirit, Lord, Sunday morning. God, I thank you and I praise you, God, for commitments made unto you in the name of the Lord Jesus. We truly thank you and we praise you and we honor you, Father, in what you're going to do. Lord, through the power of your Holy Spirit, we know that, God, you're faithful. We know the, the anointing is faithful. Lord, so therefore we thank you and we praise you as we bind all hindrances in the name of Jesus before they ever take place. And Lord, I thank you and I praise you for such freedom in this house Sunday morning, if you should tarry, God. Hallelujah. Such freedom, Lord, of the Spirit of the living God in Jesus' name, and everybody said amen and amen. I agree in that, in the name of the Lord. Anybody else tonight? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Well, God's a good God. A couple of oysters take our tithes and offerings tonight, and we'll get into the Word of God tonight. Praise the Lord. Go ahead and just take it up, Jeff. <clears throat> It's all right. We got a good youth here. Praise the Lord. Come on, somebody give the Lord a hand clap on that. Bless God. I've been praying that our youth just grow by leaps and by bounds in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Jamie, you got a 
testimony. I had talked a couple weeks ago about the girl that I had as a patient who had the breast cancer, the 34-year-old who was a single mom, um, and asked for a prayer for her. And while you were gone, Jeff had asked me if I had seen her or heard anything from her. And I said, well, no, and I probably won't because she was an ER patient. And yeah. really, I don't see those patients multiple times. Um, and I ran into her at Walmart today. Uh, and, uh, uh, and she <laughs> was in... Important. She was in line checking out, and I had just got there, and I walked past her, and I'm like, I know that's her, and I, I remember her first name, so I walked past, got about like 20 feet away, turned around, went back, yelled across a couple people, because she was the next one to check out, and I yelled her name, and she turned around and looked at me, and I could tell she recognized me, but didn't know how, and I just said, oh, I did your x-rays a couple weeks ago when you were in the ER, and she's like, oh, yeah, I remember, and I just asked how she was doing, but... I told her that I had been praying for a lot and that this church was praying for her a lot and she appreciated the prayer. I mean, we were kind of yelling across people. I didn't get to talk to her for too long. Um, but she uh, definitely appreciated the prayers. I could tell she about wanted to cry. Um, but I just thought it was kind of cool how I thought I'd never see her again, possibly. And Jeff had just asked me about that and I ran into her today. Amen. Praise Amen. God. That's the way the Lord operates. Yeah. Hallelujah. You know, I, I, before we ever start in, in our mornings, my wife and I, we always have our devotions together to pray and intercede for the, for the church and, and prayer requests and different things. And one of our my requests and her request as well is that God send somebody across our path that we might encourage dur- during the day or that we might speak a word of salvation maybe into their hearts, into their lives. Praise the Lord forevermore. And I believe God does that. I believe the Lord, uh, you know, he'll, he'll bring people our directions. Hallelujah. And he will prompt us, you know, when those people come across our direction to speak into their lives in the name of the Lord. So if you pray that prayer, be prepared because there'll be people come across your path. Hallelujah. That you can give them a word of encouragement in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Barb. What I learned throughout the corner, it was only God that kept me in my car safe. Amen. Right. I remember nothing, and they told me what all had gone on and everything, and somebody was driving that car, but it wasn't me. <laughs> hey, the Lord took care of you. He's he in there with you. Amen. We thank God for it, and we just believe in the Lord for a total healing in your body as well, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Anybody else tonight? Greg? On the same night that Jeff asked about Amy, I prayed about a gentleman that uh, was a cancer patient, and I flew over to chair of his house, didn't know him, but I felt convicted to go back and pray for him. And I stopped by his house, and uh, he had gone to hospice, but his wife was still there, but his son wouldn't let me in. And well, it's, you know, I stopped to pray, and I just felt felt led to come back. But today, as you know, it would have it. The daughter came in, and the daughter of the man came in, and she was paying on the bill at the store there. And she said uh, she was talking to Perry, and I was in the office uh, typing something up. And uh, she said, uh, "Which one of the the guys here that works for you is the is the Christian?" And Perry said, "What do you mean?" He goes. She goes, one of your guys stopped back and prayed, wanted to pray for my dad, and my brother wouldn't let him in. But I wonder, she goes, I'd just like to know which one it was. And I was sitting right there, and I said, well, that was me. And she said, well, I've been trying to get to my family for years. She goes, I don't know what you, you know, I don't really know you, but you planted a seed there. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to let you know that right, God, that's mom, you know, was so, you know, she just didn't know what to say about it. But she goes, I, I go to church, and I'm the only one in my family that attends church. But you know, somebody else, because I knew it was going to take somebody from outside, outside myself, to talk to them. And I didn't even get a chance to talk to them, but just you know, showing up and right. you know, it just shows that you know, even just being obedient to God, even though I did, that didn't end the way I thought it was going to end. You know, I thought I was going to get a chance to, to pray to them and talk to them, but you know, it didn't end that way. But it's still planted the seed, and Amen. then just planted the seed there. I mean, you know, very sad. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know. If he had no clue that I did, I did it, you know, I didn't do it during work hours, I did it after I got off work, I had went out there and, you know, he had no clue, 
and then to have him, you know, to be a witness or something like that for him. I just Amen. After that, can you really Praise God. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Anybody else tonight? Praise God. Hallelujah. Josh, you ever find out that guy who broke in your car or woman or whoever it was? Let's just pray that God get a hold of their heart. Holy Ghost conviction. Just move on their heart that uh, somehow in some way that they uh, give up or, God, uh, or the, the law gets a hold of them. Hallelujah. We believe that that can happen. Uh, you know, when, they was, when that guy was robbing this church, uh, I was so aggravated. And I said, God, get a hold of that man's heart. Somehow get a hold of him. And I want to tell you something. He got caught. Praise the Lord. So we're just going to believe that in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let that guy get his heart right before God. Or, or if it's a woman or whoever it is. Or guys or gang or whoever. Praise God. Hallelujah. You just don't mess with God's children without suffering the repercussion in Jesus' name. So we're going to pray. Father... Lord, we just thank you. We praise you, God, right now in the name of Jesus. And God, we know, Lord, that what the enemy has stole, that God, if a thief be found, he's got to, re he got to repay sevenfold. And God, I thank you and I praise you, God, that every one of the, every, everything that had been stolen off our brother and, Lord, off of our sister, even the children, that, God, it's restored back a hundredfold in the name of Jesus. And I pray for these that done this, God, that uh, that Holy Ghost conviction would get on them in the name of Jesus, that justice would be done and justice would be accomplished in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we truly thank you and we praise you for that, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And everybody said glory to God in the highest. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise the Lord. Ken, when you when you feel like selling your house over there? Huh? We gotta wait for something to open up over here at point. Well, that can happen. Bless the Lord, but how soon do you want it to happen? Well, it could happen very quickly if we start praying here. <laughs> I certainly believe that. I've seen it happen many, many times. So let's just pray that and set ourselves in agreement. Hallelujah. As a church body, bless God that God would just open the doors up for a buyer, a good buyer, that you get the right price out of your house and a home over here in in uh, um, Raider country. <laughs> Bless the Lord would open up for them in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Ken, he's a teacher. He's an artist uh, for the teachers here at Wayne Trace. So, Bless the Lord, we need a, for uh, uh, an opening uh, house to open up over here so that they can purchase in Jesus' name. So let's just pray and intercede for that. Can we do that? Father, we just thank you and we praise you right now, Lord, as we think of Ken and Tracy, Lord, and the family. God, I thank you and I praise you, Lord, for divine favor, Lord, to rest upon them. God, to rest, I pray, upon their, their house that in the eyes of someone that, God, this house would find favor in the name of the Lord, and, God, they would get the right price out of it that they desire in the name of the Lord Jesus. For, Lord, when we pray, we're precise in what we're praying. And, God, I thank you for opening a, a door of opportunity, a home in this area, you already know who it is, where it is, and where it's at. And God, I thank you and I praise you for releasing that, Lord, not only in the spiritual, but in the physical, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, to you be glorified, praised, and honored in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to just turn to one another and say, I just believe something's going to happen here. Hallelujah. Certainly believe it. In the name of the Lord Jesus, seen it over and over again. Bless the Lord. I prayed to uh, uh, put my motorcycle on uh, Craigslist for sale, and I said, God, I believe there's a guy out there or a woman out there that's really hungry for a motorcycle, and that this motorcycle is finding favor in their eyes. And it wasn't, it wasn't a week after I prayed that prayer, that motorcycle was gone. And, that, and mind you, it's in the wintertime here, and, uh, you know, they come over, got my right price out of it that I wanted, so look at me. He was happy and I'm happy. And everybody's happy, happy. And bless the Lord. So you can't tell me God don't answer prayers. He answers prayers. Hallelujah. 
whatever it might be, listen, God wants to be involved in it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you give him a hand clap of praise in the Lord, name of the Lord? Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Anybody else tonight before we get into the Word of God? Praise God. If not, we're going to get it back into Mark 14, 13. If you would, please, we're dealing with the passion. Of course, we're coming up to Easter week. Don't forget, we got John Muncy coming in as well for uh, 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 Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday. Bless the Lord. But we're dealing with the passion here and dealing with the, 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 uh, the Last Supper of the Lord Jesus Christ before he goes to the cross of Calvary. In uh, Mark fourteen thirteen, it says this. Let's read it together. And he sendeth forth two of his disciples, and said unto them, Go you into the city, and there shall meet you a man bearing a pitcher of water. Hallelujah. Now, I want us to stop here just a second. And here Jesus is, he's, he's telling his disciples, and of course, Luke brings out who those disciples were. If you, if you look at the account of Luke in Luke 22, I believe it's around the 18th uh, verse or something like that. It's Peter and John that he sent in there. And, and, uh, but if we we'll look at it, we've got to ask ourselves the question, how did Jesus know that there was going to be a man there with a pitcher of water to show these boys Hallelujah, the room where they was going to eat the Last Supper. How did Jesus know that that man would be there? Bless the Lord. Stop and think of this. And you know, if you was one of his disciples, and, you, and he come along and he said, you know, uh, there's going to be a man. He said, we need to go in, into Jerusalem and eat Passover. But uh, we've got to have a place to stay, we've got, or a place to, to eat the Passover and prepare for Passover. And he said, uh, well, this is what's going to happen. He said, I want you guys to go into Jerusalem. And when you go into Jerusalem, there's going to be a man there with a pitcher of water. And uh, you just follow him around. When you follow him around, he'll lead you to the room <laughs> where you're to eat the Passover. How did Jesus know that that guy was going to be there? Stop and think of this. I mean, you know, God is omnipotent. He's all-knowing. Say it with me. He's all-knowing. One more time. He's all-knowing. Christ operated in the gifts of the Spirit without limitation. Stop and think of this. We operate in the, in the gifts of the Spirit with limitation. Someone say, well, what is the gifts of the Spirit? I'm glad you asked the question because I want to show you this, and it's important. In 1 Corinthians 12, 8 through 10, it gives a description of the gifts. Praise the Lord. Give you just a little bit of time to flip over there. 1 Corinthians 12, 8 through 10, <clears throat> gives the descriptions. I want us to read it together if you get there. Would you, is everybody there? Wave your hand at me like this here. Bless the Lord. All right, let's, uh, let's start with the 8th verse. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. Now let's stop here just a second. I mean, no, this is not talking about the wisdom of this world. And when we talk about knowledge, it's not talking about how much knowledge you can gain in college or how many degrees that you have or you're going to school and you got educated. It's not talking about that at all, although that some people believe that's what it's talking about. You know, the more you read or whatever, the more knowledge you get. No, this is a gift. Everybody say a gift. It's a supernatural gift. Everything that we read here is supernatural. Everybody say supernatural. One more time. Hallelujah. So we see, for to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of what? Knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healings by the same Spirit, to another a working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretations of of tongues. As I said before, Jesus, he operated in all these gifts without limitation. Hallelujah. How in the world did he know that this man would be there with a picture of water, which would, would direct these disciples to the room that they was going to eat the last meal with Jesus in? Hallelujah. You see, Jesus operated here in the, uh, the word of knowledge. Everybody say a word of knowledge. One more time. 
word of knowledge. A word of knowledge simply is a revelation concerning things past or present. Word of wisdom, is the, it, it, it speaks of, of revelations of futuristic things. Hallelujah to the Lamb. So Jesus, through the gifts of the Spirit, was operating in the gift of the word of knowledge in the name of the Lord Jesus. Told the boys, hey, there's going to be a man with a pitcher, follow him, and he's going to show you right where to have your Passover meal. Bless the Lord. Another example of the word of knowledge, and, and, and I'm not going to stay in this, just wanted to show you how Christ is omnipotent. He's all knowing. He's all powerful. He's ever present. Bless the Lord. In John 1, 47 and 48, listen to what Jesus says here. John 1, 47 and 48. Hallelujah. When he was calling the disciples, listen to what he says. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no guile or no dishonesty. I mean, no, that's hard to find nowadays. Hallelujah. Now look what Nathanael says. Nathanael said unto him, How or whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. How I many know that was supernatural? Hallelujah. Supernaturally, he seen him under that fig tree. Supernaturally, he knew this guy was going to be there with a picture of water. Hallelujah. And the disciples would follow him and he would direct them to the, to the room where they would have the Passover meal. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I don't know about you, but we serve a supernatural God. Hallelujah. Now look at me. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. What he did back then, he can do today. We can operate in these very same gifts. Sometimes it don't happen when you want them to happen, but it happens on the occasion when God wants it to happen in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. God might uh, 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 give you the gift of knowledge or gift of wisdom. Bless the Lord to where uh, it's like a light bulb comes on. All of a sudden you begin to speak things that, you know, you really don't even know why you're speaking them. Hallelujah, and you're speaking them to an individual, and, and, and what it is, it's pertaining to maybe something uh, of that individual, maybe something that went on in their past or our, our future or something that's happening right now in their heart and life that they had never told anybody about it, but all of a sudden you know about it, and you know about it because the Holy Spirit has placed it in your heart and shown it to you. Is that spooky, or is that God? That's God. Hallelujah. And some would say, you know what? You know, that just can't go on. You know, that's bizarre. No, that should be in the house of God today. Especially the discerning of spirits. Yep. Can I go ahead. You're not going to do it, but I, on one of our mission trips to Guatemala, we had a church service in Guatemala City. And, and I remember a pastor was praying for uh, people around the altar. And he came up to this year, little girl and he was praying for her. And it wasn't a year, little girl, it was a young lady. You know, said, hey, this, you know, this lady's been abused. And it was the truth. I mean, it was, exactly. it was exactly what you're talking about yep. right here. And, and you know what? You wish you could, that would happen all the time, but it don't happen all the time. It happens on the occasion when God wants it to happen. Hallelujah to the Lamb. You know these people that come up and say, give me a word. Give me a word. Give me a word. And they'll run from church to church to church. And I'll tell you what, the devil will give you a word. And can I tell you something? Understand something. Hear me. You didn't see this happening all the time in the lives of the disciples. Hear me. Hallelujah. You know, we get into the arena back years ago. There was such a thing as, you know, there had to be at least 100 people slaying in the spirit, you know, and people on the ground. Lest if you didn't have that, you know, 50, 25 people slaying in the spirit, you really didn't have a move of God. How many know that there's trends that run through the church? Folk, can I tell you, can I be honest with you tonight? You can't find that very much in the Scripture, although I, it's real, because I've been slayed in the Spirit. I've been slayed in the Spirit a few times, a couple times. But understand me, it was God and it wasn't man knocking me over. I've had guys come up to me and go, and I went. I've had people 
do these numbers and do one of these, you know, that knock your head back like this and, and try to push you down? Can I tell you something? I'm not going down under no man's power. I'll go down under the Holy Ghost power. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hear me. And, and, and you know, that, that's pretty uh, present in a lot of churches today and people running to and fro seeking for a word. Can I tell you something? The Bible says we have a sure word of prophecy right here. Hallelujah to the Lamb. If you're going out seeking for a word from a man, you're going to get a word from a man. But it's not the man Christ Jesus. And nine times out of ten, when they give you a word, that word's going to be something good. Hello. Hallelujah. You know, God's going to break forth on the right and on the left, and there's going to come great financial gain into your life, you know, around the corner. All these things. What if you had a prophecy like Jesus gave the prophecy of one of the churches in, in uh, Revelations, one of the seven churches of Asia Minor, and said, the devil's going to throw several of you in prison. Be faithful unto death and you'll receive a crown of life. What if you had a prophecy like that? You'd say, that guy's a false prophet. <laughs> no! He was a true prophet. They wanted to hear what they want to hear and not what God wants to hear. And, you know, we're in a generation like that today in the church world. The church world wants to hear a message from the pulpit of what they want to hear and not what God wants to hear. Hallelujah to the Lamb. But understand something. These gifts are for real today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray to God that they function and operate in this church freely as the Lord gives in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, as we just be obedient to the Spirit of God Almighty. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise the Lord. Now going back to Mark 14, 14 through 16. Hallelujah. Mark 14, 14 through 16, it says, And wheresoever he shall go in, say, uh, say you to the good man of the house, the master saith, Where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover? with my disciples. And he will show you a large upper room, furnished and prepared, there make ready for us. And his disciples went forth and came into the city and found as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. Of course, it's obvious here, hear me, child of God, the owner of the house, he had to be, he was a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. It, it, you know, it, it doesn't speculate. Some say it was John Mark's father or whatever. But you know, that's, that's insignificant. When we get to heaven, we'll know who it was. Amen. When we get to heaven, we'll know who it was. You know, a good possibility they didn't know him at all. I mean, he might have been a complete stranger. Hallelujah to the Lamb. But I do know one thing, bless God, it was a supernatural act of the Lord Jesus Christ. And God is a supernatural God that you and I serve. And we ought to have some supernatural things going on in the house of God. And everybody said, Amen. Hallelujah. Nowadays, if something supernatural happens, they say it's bizarre. No, it should be the norm in the house of God, as you see through the book of Acts, where a lot of supernatural things were taking place, supernatural healings, devils being casted out of people. Are you hearing me? The sick healed, the lame walking, the, the, uh, the eyes, you know, the blinded eyes opened up. Praise God forevermore. I believe that's going to happen before Jesus Amen. Christ comes back. Amen. And I believe we're seeing just, just inkling spots here and there, when we see people that had stage four cancer healed, that, but you know, the doctors know that there was no hope, stage four. And then another gal comes up to me and tells me that, you know, her daughter was battling with these tumors for I don't know how long and couldn't get rid of these tumors. And now the doctor said there's nothing there. They're completely gone. That is nothing but the supernatural power of God Almighty. And I don't know about you, but the way insurance is getting nowadays, bless God, I believe Jesus is better than Obamacare. Amen. We're going to have to rely upon that in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whether it be for any sickness, disease, infirmity, whether it be a cold, whether it be flu, whatever it might be, Hallelujah, I believe there's going to be a great restoration and a great comeback Hallelujah. in the house of the living God in the name Hallelujah. of the Lord Jesus. Ought not there be a bomb in the house yes. of God? Yes. Where is the bomb of Gilead in the house of God? We need to be like e Elisha. 
that took the mantle of Elijah and strikes the water and says, where is the God of Elijah? Bwop! And the, the water split apart. Hallelujah. I say, where is the God that split the seas in the name of the Lord and opened up the blinded eyes? And God says, here am I. Praise God forevermore. I am who I am, but I believe what God is looking for is somebody to believe him. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. You know, sometimes we'll believe him, but we're believing him with a mental asset and not a heart asset. We're believing him, hear me, yeah, not with the gift of faith like we see here in 1 Corinthians where in impossible situations there's something on the inside of you that says everything's going to be all right in this. Even though everything looks negative, hallelujah, something on the inside of you says praise God, there's nothing going to happen out of this whole situation. Everything's going to come out the way that God intends it to come out in the name of the Lord. And there's a deep, settled peace down in your soul. There's not a turmoil. There's not a pacing back and forth. There's not fear. There's not worry. There's not anxiety. But there's a deep, settled peace. It's going to be all right. Hallelujah. Just like I, there's a deep, settled peace in my heart, knowing your family members are going to be in this church praising God. I know it. Hallelujah. So therefore, I rejoice ahead of time. I knew God was going to build this church out here on 17 acres of ground. I knew it before it ever existed. Knew it when I first went in the Scott, when it was preaching to 12 people, and when I really didn't even want to preach at Scott. But God told me that he, you know, that he would build the church, hallelujah, and we'd go into a building program. We'd stretch forth the curtains, you know, because you're going to break forth on the right and on the left. Can I tell you something? I stepped out in faith, believed that, because God put it in my heart. And can I tell you something? Hallelujah, we're here. I believe God's going to build the church in a greater way and greater measure. I don't see it with the natural eye, but I believe it. In my heart, hallelujah, that your loved ones are going to be here in the name of the Lord. When? I don't know. I don't put no no uh, timetable. God knows the timetable. He knows when they're going to get saved. He knows when they're going to bow in need of the Lord Jesus Christ. All he's looking for is somebody to believe him. When the doctor said you can't have kids, you're sterile and your wife's sterile. She's not passing the eggs and you're, you know, you're shooting blanks. You have nothing. You've got nothing. How many know God can work with nothing? Amen. Hello? Amen. Well, can I tell you something? I got four daughters and 13 grandkids. Now you tell me God is an America working God. And for six years I stood in the pulpit at First Assembly of God and I proclaimed from the pulpit... Thank God, God is going to give me children in the name of the Lord. Six years and people got sick and tired of me hearing that and said, you know what, this guy's a lunatic, he's crazy, but can I tell you something? My promise came down that dusty road in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't cave in and don't give up. When God puts something in your heart, hear me, it will be tested, it will be proved. If it's from God, it will stick in your heart no matter how long it takes. Hear me. Hallelujah. It'll keep sticking in there. You'll not forget about it. It'll keep pressing and pressing and pressing. Hallelujah. And you keep confessing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. And can I tell you, there'll come a day that that promise will materialize right before your very eyes in the name of the Lord. But you know what? I didn't rejoice when it took place. I rejoiced when the promise was delivered in my heart. I was full of joy and praise and thanksgiving, hallelujah, to the Lamb. And said, my Lord, hallelujah, I'm, because I've got the doctor report. I've seen, I looked in the microscope. i seen what I had. And can I tell you, what I had wasn't there. It was gone, dead. And the doctor said, no way. But God says, if you believe man's report, my report is greater. So you know what? I just choose the report of the Lord God. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb. So folk, hear me. God is still a supernatural God wanting to move supernaturally in the hearts and lives of His people to do supernatural feats and supernatural acts in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Get your, get your furniture packed up. Get ready to move because you're going to be moving before long. Said that very same thing to to Enoch and, and Teresa. And can I tell you something? They're packed up and they're moved into Van Wert. Hear me. 
Bless the Lord, James and Jamie was trying to sell their house, and for a while it's kind of stagnating. All of a sudden, you know, a house opened up, bang, away they moved. Hallelujah. God answers the prayers of His people. Would you believe Him? Believe me, child of God. Hallelujah. Listen, He said, all things are possible to him that believeth. Bless God. If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believes. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. I believe Wayne Trace is going to beat St. John's tomorrow. <laughs> oh, praise God. No. I, you know what? I, God could care less about stuff like that. Get mad at me of what you want, but he could care less about things like that. What if, what if somebody on St. John's team is praying that, you know, they're going to beat uh, Wayne Trace? <laughs> Who's got the greater faith? <laughs> hey, I get to the Lord, they got to the Father. There you go. <laughs> That's it. Bless the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. We'll just leave that out go, okay? <laughs> Bless the Lord. But uh, seriously, I don't think God's concerned about that, or who's going to win this or who's going to win that, whatever. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. He's, win- He's concerned about souls being lost and people leading them to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the main concern of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord forevermore. So, because, you know, you, you get into some Christians and they, they say, oh, man, we're praying. We're going to do this. and We're going to win this. And we're going to win that. And, you know, you're thinking, well, what if, what if there's somebody on there? So they're a Christian, too, and they're praying that they're going to win. You know, what? Well, is God really concerned about these things? I don't think so. No, I don't. We need to be more concerned about lost humanity than winning a ball game. Just my opinion. You can have your own opinions. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless God, but I'll be there Friday. (laughs) Ah, Hallelujah. Never did like St. John's. I always went to Jefferson. That's just a a feud. That was just a feud between me and across the tracks. Are you hearing me? (laughs) I've got a lot of good friends that go to St. John's. I better, let's just shut up on this, all right? Before I start digging a hole and burying myself. Bless the Lord. But it's obvious here, hear me, that, that it's possible that Jesus knew this guy. You know, I don't know, all speculation, bless the Lord. But uh, anyhow, he was wanting to have a room for Passover. And of course, when you got Passover, they come from all nations, all over. They had to go to Jerusalem for Passover. Once a year, they had to, to have Passover. Bless the Lord. And of course, we described what Passover was, you know, when the they they killed the the spotted or spotted lamb the spotless lamb uh, in Egypt and the death angel come through and of course they had to put the blood on the lentils hallelujah and Jesus at this Passover that he's going to have hear me it was going to be a special Passover he was not going you know even though they was going to eat even though they was going to eat the Passover lamb. He was going to institute to them that he was the Passover lamb and he was just about ready to give himself as a sacrificial lamb of the living God for the sin of the world. I don't know about you, but that touches my heart. Hallelujah, because you can feel when you, know, when you go through Scripture and read the Scripture, you can feel the compassion that Christ has for his disciples. Hallelujah, not only for his disciples, but for you and for me. He didn't have to do what he did, folk. Bless the Lord. Matter of fact, he said, Father... Hallelujah, if there's another way, you know, let it be come to pass. But nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. There was only one way, and he had to go to the cross. Hallelujah, and thank God he went to the cross. He stayed on the cross, hear me, and bought and paid for my salvation. He come off of that cross, and now he's seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for you and me, that we might have victory 365 days a year. Today, right now, his present day ministry is interceding for you and for me. Can I tell you something? We not only got brothers and sisters interceding for us, we've got the Holy Spirit living and abiding on the inside of us, interceding for us. We've got, listen, our kinsman redeemer, Jesus Christ, seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us. How can we lose? I said, how can we lose? We got God for us. And if God is for us, who can be against us in the name of the Lord? Man, that makes me rest in peace in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. But it's going to be a very special Passover. Jesus was going to 
introduce uh, to his disciples that he would be the Passover lamb. Whether they realized that or recognized that at that moment, I don't believe they fully did. They, they, they still believed that he was going to rule and reign at that time. His kingdom was going to be set up and he was going to rule and reign over and, and route out the Roman Empire. But uh, then they seen him nail him to the cross and seen him, uh, seen him put him in a grave. And man, I mean, their, their heart just melted on the inside and thought, man, this, we thought this was the coming one. This is, this is the one. And uh, can I tell you something? Hallelujah. Sometimes in the heart of every one of us, there's doubt that comes in. Are you hearing me? So we can't point fingers, hallelujah, to the Lamb. But this celebration, we still celebrate, listen, Passover today. This church celebrates it once a month. You know what it's called? communion. Jesus said, this do in remembrance of me. In remembrance of him. Why? What he did, what he accomplished, and what he did for you and for me. Hallelujah. We can't take that for granted, child of God. Hallelujah. Great price tag attached to the salvation of our souls. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Hallelujah. Lest we eat of the body of Christ and, and drink of his blood, we have no part in his kingdom. Hallelujah. Which simply means eating and drinking of his blood is, is, is accepting his totality of his finished work on the cross of Calvary and you become born again. You have ate and you have partaken of his blood. Now his blood is applied to the doorpost of my heart in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now look at me. The accuser of the brethren goes before the Father. I don't know how he does this, but he does it. But there'll be a time, hear me, when he's cast completely away. He'll have no, no dealings. But the accuser of the brethren goes before the Father and accuses us day and night because of our faults and because of our failures. And you know what? We've got one sitting beside our Heavenly Father. And when he looks over at his Son... He says, all I see is the blood of my son on these people. Hallelujah Hallelujah to the Lamb. Can I tell you something? A lot of times we get down on ourselves because of our failures. Now understand something. Hallelujah. If you have sinned, confess your sin to the Lord. Don't confess it to me. Confess it to God. Hallelujah. And get back in the race. Don't cover up sin because you can't cover up sin. Not before God. And if you cover up sin, look at me, understand me, you'll die spiritually. Spiritually, you will die. Hear me. Hallelujah. And there's times we mess up. Bless God. But understand me, that's when the devil comes along and and is the accuser of the brethren. Look at them. They're the ones that said, they, you know, I'm mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. I'm never going to do this. And I got them doing that. Look at them. And the Lord says, I see nothing but the blood of my son, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful for the blood. We sing that song. I'm thankful for the blood of Jesus. Thankful for the blood of Jesus. You see, God looks through a filtered system called the blood of Jesus Christ. And brother and sister, hear me. I've been under clubs of condemnation by the devil. And the Lord says, hey. There's no condemnation to them that walk, that are, that are in Christ Jesus, that walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit of the living God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise the Lord. But in Mark 14, 17, and 18, it says this, And in the evening he cometh with the twelve, and as they sat and did eat, Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, One of you which eateth with me shall betray me. In the book of John, John begins to tell him, uh, uh, talks to him about the washing of the feet. Remember that? Hallelujah. Before the, uh, supper, he, uh, he, let, he girded himself with a towel and he started washing the feet. And he come to Peter and started washing Peter's feet. And Peter said, you're not going to wash my feet. And, and the Lord said, lest I wash your feet, you have no part in the kingdom of God. And Peter said, not only my feet, but here's my whole body. Wash my whole body. Bless the Lord. And uh, then he gives a discourse on the vine and the branches. He talks to him about the vine and the branches. This is all Passover time. Then he told him much about the Holy Spirit, the coming Holy Spirit that was going to come. Bless the Lord. Then he also prayed. 
And then here in Mark, suddenly like a lightning bolt coming out of a, out of a clear sky, hallelujah, he gives an announcement that one of them would betray him. You talk about putting a damper or a wet blanket on a fire, that's putting a wet blanket on a fire. Hallelujah, you stop and think you're sitting here eating with the Lord and the Lord doing all these things for us, hear me, and talking to us about the Holy Spirit. I mean, uh, it had to be a, a personal revival when sitting in front of the Lord and listening to Him minister to you. And then all of a sudden, you know, out of the blue, you know, He says, one of you is going to betray me. And, of course, you know, that rose questions in the minds of the disciples. Amen. What if you was there and with, along with the Lord, and the Lord, after he was ministering and what have you, he stops all of a sudden out of the blue. He says, you know what? One of you is a rascal. One of you is going to betray me. What would you have done? Would it got your, your wheels spinning a little bit? <laughs> it certainly got the disciples wheels uh, 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 spinning hallelujah one of his own 12 would betray him and turn him over to the enemy stop and think of this a second how many know that jesus never did anything hallelujah lest it was fulfilled by scripture are you hearing me he came and fulfilled all scripture hallelujah psalms 41 9 i want you to look at this Hallelujah. He's got this mark right down to the jot and the tittle. Psalms 41, 9. Let me know when you're there. Wave your hand at me. Let's read it together. My own familiar friend, which did eat of my bread, hath lifted up his heel against me. Look right down to the T. This prophecy is being fulfilled. One of his own twelve is about ready, hear me, to turn, in, turn him in to the enemies. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. How many has ever had some Judas in your life? <laughs> One that you've ate supper with. One that you fellowshiped with. One that you hung around with. One that you've had great times with. One that built you up. One that encouraged you became a Judas in your life. Anybody ever been there besides me? I believe everybody's had a Judas. And some would say, well, I've never had a Judas. Well, hang on for a while. You'll have a Judas pop up someplace. He'll pop up someplace in your life. Be very aware of those that pat you on the back and speak all good about you and all, oh, man, you're the next best thing to slice toes because the next thing you know, they'll be a Judas to you. While they're patting you on the back, they're stabbing you in the back. While they're kissing you on the side of the cheek, hear me, they've got a knife in the back. That's exactly what Judas did with Jesus. But you know what? Jesus knew all the time who it would be. But, uh, you know, don't be surprised, hear me, if a Judas pops up in your life. Okay? Because it happens. Can you say that with me? It happens. And, 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 and it hurts your heart. Don't, don't get me wrong. It's not something that you just fluff off, you know, like a water off a duck's back. Because especially if they're close to you. Judas was close. He was one of the twelve. He was dedicated to authority. He cast out devils. Hear me. He healed the sick. He was one of the twelve at one time. Hallelujah. What made, you know, what makes lambs go, turn to goats? Yeah, good people get, go bad. But uh, hear me. It, it happens, and you wish it wouldn't happen, but it does happen. But the thing of it is, don't let the Judas, listen, pull you away from your advancement in God's kingdom. And everybody said, Amen and amen. It might be one in your own family. That's, that, that's the toughest of all, especially if it's in your own family. And, and many have that happen in their own family. Maybe a Judas rises up or what have you. Bless the Lord. The only thing you can do is pray for them. Amen. Bless the Lord and not allow that to detour you away from the things of God Almighty in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 
that Mark 14, 19 says, after he makes this statement, Mark 14, 19 says, And they began to be sorrowful, and to say unto him one by one, <laughs> What? Is it I? As the impact of the announcement sinks in, hear me, child of God, Levin started thinking, can it be me? <laughs> what, is there some skeletons in my closet that maybe the Lord knows about that I'm not really letting anybody know about it? You know what it did? It did one thing for them and it did another thing for Judas. It got them to examine their own hearts. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. And to Judas, hear me, child of God, it got, God was, was, was uh, 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 compassionate and, and merciful and grace listened towards Judas, knowing that Judas was the one that was going to betray him, giving him a chance to get right before God. But he didn't. Hear me. Even up to his death, to Christ's death, he gave Judas many, many chances to get right before him. You see, hear me. Hallelujah. Peter backslid just as well as Judas did. But Peter repented and got right before God. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah to the Lamb. They said, is it I? They all went one by one to him. Is it me? Will I betray you? Will I turn you over to your enemies? As I said, maybe they all had some type of skeletons in their closet. I don't know. Only God knows if we hold skeletons in our closet. Amen? Bless the Lord. But, and and I, I made this statement from the pulpit, and I placed it probably on YouTube or, or on Facebook, but there's three people living in us. Number one, the one we think we are. Number two, the one other people think we are. And number three, the one God knows we are. <laughs> Hallelujah. Understand me. God knew what Judas was. Hear me. God knows what we are. You know, um, we know who we are. Other people might think they know who we are, but they really don't know who you are. Does that make sense? Hallelujah. Because you really don't know who a person is, lest you live with that person 24 hours out of the day or so. When you live with that person, then you know who they are. Am I right? Hallelujah. After a while, you find out that, man, I mean my prince in shining sh uh, armor, hallelujah, he turned out to be a devil in a union suit and a pitchfork and horns on the head. Can that happen? Oh yeah. Well, bless God, you know if if you know if if uh, I get saved and and I know he's not saved or she's not saved and and we'll get him to church and we'll get him saved. Well, can I tell you you're playing Russian roulette when you're doing things like that? Understand me. Hallelujah, chances are, you know, it's, it, it could cause a lot of problems in the house of God or in your house. And but uh, listen, Praise the Lord. That's why it's needful. Listen, if, especially if you're married to an unsaved person, your light and their darkness, and light and darkness, you know what? It, 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 there, there, there's a, a, a feud there. But understand me, hear me, hallelujah. That doesn't mean that, well, I separate from them and throw them out the door. No. Hallelujah. If you read Scripture, you say, listen, that, that the wife or the husband can, is an influence to that one that's unsaved. But if he wants to leave you or she wants to leave you because of your salvation, then they're free to leave if they want to leave. Hallelujah. And you can remarry again. That's scripture. Hallelujah. That's what the Lord says. But, you know, it says you don't know whether that man or whether that lady will give their heart and life to the Lord Jesus Christ down along the line in the name of the Lord. So we're believing for all those loved ones, hallelujah, that aren't saved. I know that a lot of these, you women that are going through a lot of things with your husband and, and a lot of the husbands may be going through things with their wives that are not saved or maybe their children, bless the Lord, believing for the power of God to get a hold of them and get them saved 
in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. But three people living in us, the one that we think we are, one people think we are, and the one God knows who we are. Look at Hebrews, if you would, please. Boy, it's getting late here. Hebrews 4.12, and I want to read this out of the Amplified Translation. Hebrews 4.12 it says, for the word that God speaks is alive, full of power, making it active, operative, energizing, and effective. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating to the dividing line of the breath of life, or the soul, and the immortal spirit, and the joints and marrow, that is, of the deepest parts of our nature. Now look, this is what I want you to look at. Exposing and sifting and analyzing and judging the very thoughts and purposes of the heart. Understand me, you, you can never slip anything by God. Because His Word exposes. As a matter of fact, it says exposes, sifts, it analyzes, it judges the very thoughts and purposes of the heart. God even knows our very thoughts. Stop and think of it. Hallelujah. He, he knew the thoughts of the Pharisees. Why, why mumble against yourselves? You know, he would, he would read their thoughts to them. I don't know about you, but that, that would irritate me, you know. How will this guy know what I'm thinking? Bless the Lord. But, uh, you know, it analyzes the very heart. Uh, let me give you a, a comparison with this in Matthew 26, 31 through 35. It explains exactly what Hebrews is talking about here. Matthew 26, 31 through 35. Matter of fact, this, this still ties in with the passion, only it's in the book of Matthew instead of the book of Mark. It said, Then said Jesus unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this night before the cock crows, you should deny me thr thrice. Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny you. Likewise also said all the disciples. Hallelujah. Peter makes a great boast here. Hear me, child of God, and a stand. And going back to the people, going back to that, that uh, uh, little remark that I made, uh, three people living in us, the one we think we are, the one other people think we are, and the one God knows we are. God knew what was in the heart of all the disciples and, all, and Peter. Peter thought he knew something and made his big boast. Hallelujah. You know what? Maybe all these other ones are going to deny you, Lord, but I'm Peter. I'm the rock. I'm not going to deny you. Bless God. Bring the devil on. And the Lord tells him this. Before the night's over, you're going to deny me three times, Peter. No! Uh -uh. I'm going to die for you. I'll die before I do it. How many know that God's word is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword? And what the Lord's word goes forth, it will not return unto him void. But what happened when they got, got a hold of Jesus? And what happened? Every one of the disciples fled. They scattered every one. Peter followed afar off. He's kindled around a fire. A little damsel says, hey, he says, you're one of his disciples. And he said, no, I'm not one of his disciples. And she said, yeah, you're one of his disciples. No, I'm not one of his disciples. I never knew the man. Your figure of speech gives you away. You're one of his disciples. And the Bible said he changed his figure of speech and said, I don't know the man. And all of a sudden, er, that rooster became an evangelist. And you know what? The Bible said that Peter started weeping bitter tears. Why? Because Jesus read his innermost being and told him what would happen. Hallelujah. Thank God Peter repented. Are you hearing me? And can I tell you something? And we'll close. Peter was true to his, his, his remarks that he made. He did die for his Christ. Matter of fact, he was hung on a cross. And he said, I want hung upside down. I'm not worthy to hang the way that my Lord hung. You hang me upside down. And that's what they did. Bless the Lord. That was after Pentecost, have you? Praise the Lord. So understand something, hallelujah. We see a lot 
of, of, of teaching here that we just went through and a lot of what we're just given to you about communion and, of course, the passion coming up and Christ dying on the cross and his last dying words and what have you. That's, that's going to come probably next Wednesday. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And as we come into the Passion Week, bless the Lord. But you know what? I do this in remembrance constantly and continuously before me. I know what he has done on the cross for me. Hallelujah. And it humbles my soul. And I'm so delighted that he called me to be a child of the living God. Aren't you thankful for that? He could have called millions and millions of people. But you know what? He said, Bill, Joe, John, Sue, Beth, whoever, whosoever will, come unto me. I don't know about you, but I was one of those whosoever's. And I come to him. And he saved my soul, washed my sins away, given me a robe of righteousness, and wrote my name in the Lamb's book of life. I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Stand and give the Lord a hand. Clap of praise tonight. Can you do that? Bless the Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Go ahead. Don't you think it's, I know myself, I think of it a lot, you know, if, you, if you're a Christian, you know, and, and you know you're, you stand for truth, and you will not back up the lies that come out against you, you know, from people. Well, and I always say, you know, it's easier to pray for when you think, Lord, I'm so thankful that you do read my heart. Yeah. yeah. And whatever they said, I'm so thankful I don't have to try to explain or convince you Right. That my heart is not in the condition they say. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, it just it does breathe an easiness on you. That Definitely. You know, and I think that's why I say the Lord knows our very heart. Yes. You know, I, and you know, I could care less what people think, although it does affect you what people think. You know, you're just human. You do. It does affect you in in a way. But the most important matter is is what God thinks. God knows what's in your heart. In the name of the Lord, praise God. That's good. We had a good time tonight. Praise God. Jeff, go ahead and close us if you would. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for Wednesday night service, Lord. A blessing that it truly has been to our spirits, Lord. It's been an encouragement. Lord, it's given us wisdom, Lord, as we guide our way through your word. We just ask, Lord, that word continues to build us up and, and encourage us, Lord, and, and our faith walk with you. And, Lord, that we just not just keep that word within us, Lord, but, Lord, it produces fruit in our life, Lord. And, uh, Lord, that we're never backward. We're never ashamed. But, Lord, we go boldly before people knowing, Lord, that you back us in everything that we do in our lives. Let us be a light in this world of darkness. Bless your people as they go forth this week. Lord, as they continue to walk with you. And, Lord, that they draw close to you. And, Lord, that they truly, once again, become that light in this world. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, amen.